I'm Maria Schwartz, along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. Is there a new top dog in the WNBA? Let's discuss. like our show please consider joining our patreon community that's patreon.com backslash windsider patreon.com backslash windsider costs less than a cup of coffee a month and it directly shows support for the hard work we are doing covering the WNBA. don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at windsider.com that's windsider.com and make sure you're joining us over on playback for our w watch parties Use the link playback.tv forward slash Winsider. It's playback.tv forward slash Winsider. Welcome back to the Winsider Show. I'm Maria Schwartz, the co-host, Hall of Famer, Rachel Galligan. Um, a wild weekend in the W. A lot of, a lot of things happening. Um, three teams have now clinched the playoffs to keep you updated. We got the Aces, the Liberty, and the Sun in that order. Um, and I think like an interesting, fun topic, as it were, is the Aces. They bounce back from back-to-back losses against the New York Liberty. Granted, only one of those counts against their regular season record. Um, and you, you know, right? Like the is there a new top dog? That was what we said at the beginning of, of the segment of the episode. But like, I think let, just to give a little bit of explanation of why we're even having this combo is not only does New York beat them back-to-back. Yes, they move on and, and can't, you know, pull off the three-peat. Um, but following that, I mean, Vegas has a close game against uh, a beaten Washington Mystics team that arguably, um, you know, final score doesn't do it justice because some late injuries uh, to Natasha Cloud really hampered that team. But And then you see them drop to the Sparks, which, if you <laughs> Rachel, if you would have told me start of the season, Las Vegas Aces are going to drop one to the Sparks or the Aces aren't like you look through the teams in this league and you go, okay, the Aces are going to sweep these teams, but the Aces are not going to sweep New York. Okay. I see that Dallas. Okay. Okay. I see that. And then the Sparks, I think the Sparks has got to, got to turn some heads, Rachel. Well, what do you think? Like have the Aces peaked too early? Just to clarify, you're talking about New York beating Las Vegas because I mean, last week they split. You're talking about their their previous meeting, right? Because last week New York, I mean, won by like what twenty on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and then Thursday Vegas was able to bounce back. So, and again, I know the Tuesday Commissioner Cup game doesn't count, but that was a that was a really interesting game to me. Um, you know, I, these games have not been close, really. I mean, you look at some of the margins of, of, of this kind of series and these teams meeting so far this season, like none of them have been close. And then, you know, you go into Thursday, Vegas is able to bounce back. That's the game that, you know, matters. And it ha- it, it has to do with the standings. I think they played much better. Um, I mean, <clears throat> completely honest, I looked at that game on Saturday and I thought, and like, I had like a split second in my mind where I thought, oh, that's kind of a trap game. And like coaches will talk about trap games or games that might be like a little bit, eh, you know, there, there could be something that goes on there. I mean, I will say Vegas has been so good at home this year and we've, we've talked about it. What was it? 15, 16 and oh, I mean, they lost to New York, but that doesn't count. So they kept that streak going and then LA goes to Vegas and beats them on their home floor. Um, You know, here's the thing. LA is an interesting team to me. Clearly, this is not a complete team. Clearly, they've battled a ton of injuries, but but let's be let's be clear. They have MVP caliber players on this team. Could they strike gold and go in there and just play really, really well and beat a team like Las Vegas? And in my mind, I was thinking, like, man, if the stars align, that could be kind of a a, a tricky game. You know, like I I really think a team like LA can 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 do something like that. Do I think they're going to go make a deep run in the playoffs? No, I don't. I, I think right now, you know, the, con- the bigger concern is, okay, is this going to end up being a playoff team or is this going to end up being a, a lottery team? That's got to be the biggest concern. 
with LA and we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I kind of looked at that game and I thought this could be a trap. And especially because Vegas is like, they're not indestructible anymore, you know? And I think if, if you're an, an opponent in this league and you're looking at this Las Vegas aces team, you're, you're seeing like, they've got chinks in the armor. Their depth is questionable. You know, they, they didn't necessarily play great last week. Like they're not playing their best basketball across the board. So like, you know, I guess I'm not too surprised. I mean, on one hand, I am. On the other hand, I'm not. What about you? I, I, I feel the same. Like, I'm surprised because it's L.A. and because what we've seen throughout the season. Um, and because also when I look at Vegas, I often think you need depth and three-point shooting to run with them and to beat them. The alternative of that is if they're not hitting their shots, right. if they're not draining it from three. You see Chelsea Gray, I think, had 10 points. Um, you know, uh, Jackie Young at 12 or something like that. And, uh, Kelsey Plum has a similar score. Like when you're struggling, yes, Asia Wilson goes off with a big, you know, almost a double, double scoring high twenties. Um, you know, looking like an MVP candidate that Asia Wilson is. I just think it's one of those things where like, and this is why I've been a proponent of it. I know every, every, a lot of people disagree. I don't think Asia Wilson's MVP this year. I don't think she's the MVP. I know. She's playing amazing. I know she's putting up those stats. And I know everyone's going to push back at me. Aria, what are you talking? You don't know basketball, blah, blah, blah. Like, I have said it from day one. While Asia in Elements brings this team together, I think the key of their success is not Asia Wilson currently in this season. Asia Wilson's going to do amazing, right? She's we, she's a two-time MVP. She's Defense Player of the Year. She's WNBA champion. She's going to be amazing. But what takes this team over the top, which makes what makes this team so unbeatable, so scary, so nightmare giving, um, is their three point shooting, is their ball movement. And I'm sorry, that's not coming from Asia Wilson. Um, And so when I see like a game where your little three, I I don't even want to call them little, you know what I mean? Like not Asia Wilson is the one who's going off. Um, or are the ones who are struggling? I look at it and I go, okay, this this is a team that can be beat. Um, so yeah, I, I that's a long winded way of saying like, yeah, they're beatable. I think it comes down to can you hit threes and can you stop them from hitting threes? Yeah, I mean, I I would love to dive in more into the box score a little bit, but unfortunately, right now the WNBA uh, box score stat portion of the site is a little down. <laughs> Hopefully, they get that up and running here soon, but um. I mean, I'll push back on the Asia Wilson thing. Um, I, I, I mean, I think this is going to be very similar to kind of how it felt. Like, it's really going to come down to the wire. You know, I mean, we've still got a few more weeks. What is it? Seven, eight more games, whatever it is. I mm-hmm. mean, we're, depending on how Asia Wilson's playing, Brianna Stewart is playing. I mean, you've got, why not throw Alyssa Thomas in there? Alyssa you know? Thomas needs to be in there. I'm sorry. She's essentially averaging a double-double. Well, Yeah. And then I mean, the, the, the triple double numbers. I mean, oh, sorry, sorry. She's the same. I meant triple double. My bad. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, aver- she's almost averaging a double double. She better be an MVP. Double, double. That's a night <laughs> thing. Um, no, I, I think it comes down to the wire. I mean, I think the biggest thing with me, Asia Wilson is, I don't know. I'd have to really dive down and look at these numbers. I, you know, I don't know if like I had to decide right now, who would I vote for? Mm-hmm. It's going to come down to, you know, how the rest of this season plays out. And now we're getting to the point where it is really interesting, right? We're really starting to fine tune um, some of the individual performances that we're seeing this season on a bigger scale for me, though, is I think Vegas, I mean, the depth, I mean, it's glaring to me, the lack of depth. I talked about it last week. I think it's still rearing its head, um, you know, not having Candace Parker and consistently in the rotation is hurting this team. Tremendously. We talked about this team and their depth last year. The stars aligned. They went on to win it all. Like they had luck on their side. And let's be honest, anybody who wins a championship, you still got to be able to have a little bit of a strike of luck. Um, you know, well, I, Rachel, don't you think that like, I don't know. It, it's funny because I, I think so many people like when Candace Parker joined the team and when Alicia Clark joined the team now, granted they're missing three key players. Sorry, they're missing two key players. We're not going to get into the whole off-court issues with Rakana Williams. But the fact that she's not on this, like having a player who's as explosive as her, a player you can trust, who's won it before, who's played with vets, who's played with superstars, 
and knows how to be a role player for a winning team. Like that's a huge blow that we're not talking about because nobody wants to talk about the fact that she's arrested for domestic abuse, which is a horrible thing. And I'm like, I'm not here to play judge jury and whatever. All I'm saying is from a basketball perspective, for sure. this team is worse off not having Raquan Williams and not having Candace Parker. Right. And right. the combination of those two, like you're saying, puts them back in a situation like last year. Yeah. But they're not all, you know, firing on all those cylinders. I always bring up Lindsay Whalen had an interview after at some point um, after she won a bunch of rings. And she was like, look, the hardest thing was the year after the championship. Mm -hmm. You're riding high early on. But then when you get to the playoffs and you get late in the season, you don't have that same drive. You're not starving for food. You've well, eaten. And the margin of error is so small. You know, I mean, I don't know the timeline of Candace Parker. That's a whole other conversation. But, you well, know, apparently if you ask that, you're a horrible person. <laughs> Rachel. I, I hope I hope for the sake of the aces that that's something that can be you know possible. I, I'm really concerned about this team right now. I mean, because anybody else, you know, has an off night or there's an injury. Heaven forbid, you know, something goes down like the ship is it's a completely different scenario. And I think I don't think it's fair to say, oh, there's a new top dog. This team is still very clearly three games ahead in the number one spot. They've clearly got some things to figure out, though. They need some players to, to be able to contribute more off the bench. But, you know, like, it drops off. It's like Alicia Clark, and then it's like, well, <laughs> we've got... Well, and, and so I'll say is when I say top dog, I mean it in the power ranking sense mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. each day, every minute, every hour, we're reevaluating you know, who you, where's it? I view power rankings kind of like confidence, but also like scariness. Can you give, can you give us uh, the top, the Winsider power rankings that came out today? Cause I don't think I had a chance to look at them. Oh yeah. And while oh, we're yeah. here, we oh, might as well plug it. Great, great plug, Rachel Gallagher. No, I'm serious. Um, <laughs> the queen, the queen of the plugs. Um, so we got Phoenix, obviously at 12, Indiana at 11, Seattle at 10, Chicago at nine and LA at eight. Uh, moved up one position after being the number one team in the league. Mystics at seven, Lynx at six, Dream at five. Wings pretty much have solidified, at least in my mind, have solidified themselves. I don't see them jumping, even with Connecticut kind of skidding down right now. I don't see them jumping over Connecticut, who's at number three. And then, uh, ooh, I, it's funny because I actually had not checked. I I wanted to wait to see it live. I know I voted. Um, I know that number one and number two was a very close thing divided by literally split by one vote and the New York Liberty stay at number two for us. Oh, Las Vegas aces at one for, for me, it was a combination of two things. It was a combination of, of the past three games. Now, granted we didn't put out the prerequisite of don't count or do count the commissioner cup game. Right. I think it inherently was counted to a degree just because how do you ignore that, right? You like You can't. That said, it doesn't impact the season in any way, shape, or form, other than the New York Liberty players are a little bit richer than the Vegas players right now. Although, with Vegas' is under the table money, maybe it's even. But had the, to pull that but the entirety of just how a team is playing right now, you can't ignore yes, that. You know? Exactly. And so for me, to see New York compete, even in their loss um, of their last three games against L.A., or Vegas, Vegas, and New York's last three games, New York wins two of them. They lost the most recent one. Um, but to see Vegas drop that game to the LA Sparks, for me, for me personally, I put them at number two because it's a today thing. It's a this hour, this minute. I have slightly more confidence in New York currently. And that's because yeah. I think New York got those crappy um losses like trap games whatever you want to call it i think they got them out earlier in the season and i'm not seeing now granted there's a lot of games that i don't think should be close for new york that are close but i think for the most part for the most part as of today uh there's a little bit more confidence in them what do you think no i totally agree i i it's very close you know, before we, we were talking about you know there was a, a considerable amount of distance now here we are today end of August headed into whatever week this is like it's it's getting real close that gap is closing in at a rapid pace and I will say 
New York has continued to get better and play their better basketball late into the season. Now it's going to be really interesting these next three weeks, two and a half, three weeks, you know, does that continue? Do they kind of hit a lull? I mean, there's still plenty of time left um, in terms of, you know, but, but now, you know, we kind of get to turn the conversation and start talking about positioning for playoffs. I mean, you talked about Dallas. That's that, that team. I love watching the Dallas wings right now. They, they had such a great win over Connecticut. Um, the wit, the rate in which they are scoring the basketball is so enjoyable to watch. And this feels like a team that is clicking. They're playing free. You can tell that they have a good, it feels like they all get along. There's good chemistry. I mean, that's a dangerous team right there. Shameless plug. I know you're going to talk about your little wager you put down. Congratulations. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But, <laughs> but it might. No, actually, the, um, this convo is making me think we're going to have to put something up on the website or website where <laughs> um, based it, it gives you, because I think a lot of people are still confused by the playoff bracketing. Um, we're going to have to throw something up make some sort of graphic or something for Winsider on the website or social that will give you after the games based on current seating, who would play who, because this is where it gets interesting, where as of today, right, you would have the LA Sparks taking on Vegas. And we already know LA can win that. Game. No, um, <laughs> you would have Washington playing New York, which I think is going to be really, really interesting if they can get healthy. All in my opinion, all Washington needs to do is get Shakira, Atkins, Cloud, and Delhi as healthy as freaking possible. It doesn't matter. Just don't lose uh, the game and a half or don't lose more than that and, and fall out of playoff contention. You have Minnesota would be taking on Connecticut. Obviously not great for Minnesota. And then Dallas, who so far is 2-0 and against Atlanta this season when playing them. And then it slowly moves on. I I think right now what we're seeing is Connecticut is 6-4 is and four over the last you know, 10 games, they're on a one game win streak. I think they had like, what, a three game losing streak, something like that. Yeah. Dallas, three game win streak. Um, Pretty solidified. I think the top four spots are pretty, pretty solidified. I don't see Atlanta breaking ahead to do that. But I do think, and I'm curious, Rachel, for you, like, we know out of all the teams in the league right now, New York is probably the hottest, right? Like, they they're clicking, they're peaking at the right moments we're not asking whether or not they're peaking at the right moments. We know Connecticut's not like blowing us out of the water. We know Vegas is neither with, as we've talked about Dallas, I feel like is that other team totally. that is, is hitting it at the right moment. Now, again, yes, I put $10 down. I <laughs> took advantage of an amazing bet. I do think I'm going to say this now besides Vegas, who I have so many questions with, like, all right, no, I don't I can't say it over New York as of today, but I have more confidence in Dallas winning the finals than Connecticut today. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, again, we're talking about in a series and being able to play, you know, in, in longer stretches. I mean, does has Dallas shown enough consistently? It feels like they've they've made a good jump this year, right? It feels yeah. like we're looking at this team and like we kind of was we were kind of hoping this team could like do last year what they're kind of doing now but then mm -hmm. now you've got the new coach you've got the you know rejuvenated whatever's going on in the organization it just feels like okay dallas has taken that step however consistently and when mm -hmm. you playoff time that that's a new that's a new animal you know and I, you talked about washington you know this this team has kind of like limped through the entire season we know <laughs> the talent on this team Clearly, Elena Deladon not being healthy. You know, we've talked about it nauseum, but this team we know has talent. And if I'm Washington, I'm sitting here just exactly what you said. If we can just not fall out of this and maybe, you know, maybe position ourselves on that little, you know, six, five, six line, you know, whatever. And then, get, you know, it's, it's like what people say in like NCAA tournament, like it's a whole new season. It's a whole new season. Let's go in here and like, let's do what we know we can do. Washington, do we all, I mean, I would be surprised if there was anyone who disagreed. We know what this organization and the stars on this team have done before. Can they click and do it again? Sure. Dallas, my question would be, again, consistently, consistent mm -hmm. success, being able to string together consistent play over long stretches of weeks, you know, because then you feel like, you know, oh, okay, they've, they're playing really well. And then they have like a, a bad loss. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I have enough it's not a bad thing. I just don't have 
the experience watching them late in the season. And you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, totally. It'll be interesting to see, you know, these next couple of weeks, does this team continue to peak or do they hit another, you know, a little Valley and then kind of peak again. But I mean, Dallas and Dallas and New York, in my opinion, I agree with you are, are two of the most hotter teams right now and just how they're playing across the board. And I do, I mean, you look at Vegas and they don't feel immortal anymore. They feel, I will say, I, I feel like we have to say it because we're talking about hot teams. LA sparks four game win streak. Oh, um, God, I had to bring it up. They have the biggest win streak that. in the league. Um, no, but so the, the one thing I'm going to push back against you, if I'm Washington, I'm so happy where I am right now, because here's the thing. You need for Washington to make a deep playoff run. Again, if we're putting on our Washington cap, if we're diehard Washington fans, if we're working in the organization and we're saying, how can we win a championship? I want to play the hardest competition when Della, when our team is most healthy. And realistically, the team is going to be most healthy if they can do it in the way I have envisioned of sitting these players who are a little bit banged up as much as you can to get to the playoffs. I'm happy sitting at seven or eight. I'm fine playing Vegas and New York to start the playoffs. Call me crazy. I know Washington, when clicking, can destroy New York. And I know Washington, when clicking, can beat Vegas. Mm -hmm. With Connecticut, Connecticut's a tricky one. Connecticut's the team that I can see them, their defense, just shutting down Washington and Washington like I'm talking about like a 64 to, you know, 58 final score, like just boring, dreadful, horrible to watch. Just physical and, you know, great yeah, what they do. That, Cause if, if, if there's one thing you want, you want to play New York. Who's not like a crazy physical team. You want to play New York, a team that you already know when you're playing your best, you can beat. And you want to play Vegas again, not a team that's going to bang physically of the top three teams. Like, the team you want to play least if you're Washington is Connecticut. And I understand a lot of this comes down to like, if the play, if the team's hot, if the team's not, if, you know, so many aspects. I I just think Washington honestly is sitting happy because then if you beat New York, then you have the second easiest path most realistically, right? Like the quicker you beat the better team, then you are in path to play lower seeded teams. My big question, how about the Chicago Sky? Five game losing streak. They are right now the first team out. They are in the lottery. If the season ended today, you've got to imagine this is an organization that is scratching and clawing and doing everything they can to try and sneak into these playoffs, right? Because I mean, lottery really holds no value for them. No value at all. And and speaking of lottery, like let's let's talk about Minnesota fifteen and seven, Washington fifteen and seven, Minnesota with the tiebreakers. They're sitting at sixth place. LA 13 and eight. So you have Minnesota and Washington tied for six, seven. Then you have LA a game and a half behind. Then you have Chicago is a game and a half behind LA for that last playoff spot. It's really, really interesting because you look at these teams. Chicago is playing. I don't, it's, it's not like they're playing for their life. It's not, they have nothing to play for. They have nothing to lose for. Whereas Minnesota, LA strongly Minnesota the most honestly like we were talking about it before we got on like if I'm Minnesota as much as this sucks I'm sorry Minnesota Lynx fans I'm sorry fans who hate tanking and all that discussion Minnesota needs to lose because <laughs> ju- strictly speaking from an odds perspective if they make the playoffs this year that ruins them for their lottery slash draft odds next year right and And then you're looking at these other teams, Indiana, Phoenix, Seattle, teams that realistically are probably going to be in that conversation next year also, unless crazy things change, right? And so we're looking at this and we're just, I'm just thinking to myself, like, if I'm Minnesota, you already did half the issue. Half the issue was being being a lottery team last year, right? And so I just think if I'm Minnesota, I want to lose out. I want, as much as it sucks, you gain more. Then, then if you win. Well, it's going to be an all. interesting week. I mean, when we're having this conversation next Monday, <clears throat> I mean, some of these matchups really, I mean, you start getting really, you know, analytical with it. Minnesota goes on to play Dallas Wings twice. 
And then I believe they play Las Vegas. Am I correct? I think on, no, they play New York. So that's a tough week for Minnesota. You know, you're playing, you're playing two of the top four teams in the league. And so, I mean, like it can be a completely different story a week from now. Um, some other interesting matchups to me, and I know we'll go through this, I'm sure do some types of pick them, but you know, Connecticut, close the gap by the way, Connecticut and Washington. Interesting one. Chicago plays Seattle. Okay. That's a winnable game. They might be able to close the gap a little bit. Who else does Chicago play? Las Vegas. I don't see them. I don't, I just don't see that. Chicago's playing the three plays, the top three teams one time each, and then plays uh fever seattle I, again this isn't in the order this is i'm i'm looking at a remaining schedule yeah. toughest remaining schedule left is washington phoenix new york those are the top three teams yeah. with the toughest schedule the easiest schedules moving forward easiest is dallas second easiest vegas third easiest atlanta minnesota's right is sitting there at eight where they have to play dallas twice which sucks new york once um and the mystics i like mystics are are a tricky one because they're gonna be fighting for their life probably at that they really point. Are, and it's a t- it's gonna be an uphill battle the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's really really interesting. I mean, you look at Connecticut. Connecticut plays New York twice and nothing else from like good teams. I mean, they basically just play the lottery after that. Yeah. Um. It, it's gonna be really really interesting to see where this kind of shakes out. Yeah, because like. I could this could just be going in so many, so many different directions. I think it's going to be really interesting. I think when we look at these standings, when we talk about it, LA has a reason to not want to be in the playoffs. Washington, not so much. Um, because because they're going to be getting good picks from trades. Um, and and you have a fair amount of your players going free agent after this year. What Washington looks like next year is going to be an interesting aspect. Chicago does not matter. So you have of these four teams on the playoff bubble. And if you really want to stretch it, Seattle um, is what three and a half games out of the playoff bubble Um, or yeah, three and a half games for me, it's Minnesota and it's LA should be wanting to move out to lose a little bit, but Hey, that's just me. That's, that's where my mind's at. Let's do pick them. Three weeks left of the season. Here we go. Three weeks left of the season, eight and seven games for most teams. (laughs) Sun, at Mystics. Hold on. Um, so, man. By the way, I, I want to yeah, make it clear. What are we we did four games. I was up four games last week. I was up by three. I'm now only up by two. Ooh, okay. I'm closing. So you're yeah. closing in. Um, ooh, that's a good game. Uh, Connecticut and Washington. I think Sun will win that one. Just okay. Point. Okay. I'll, I'll go. Uh, I mean, I also do, but I'll go. Mix it up. Yeah, why not? I'll go DC because you know what? DC's got to pull it off. Um, then we got Aces at Dream. Again, you know, Atlanta's at home. They're feeling like they can they can they can do some damage here. I just the Las Vegas team we know we know them to be. I I, I don't I don't see it happening. I got big Vegas. Yeah, I can't I can't see Vegas. Especially after I'll say it an embarrassing loss. Sure. You expect the better teams to come back. I feel like they've always done a good job at being able to respond. Like their next game, Vegas has resp- been able to respond. So, um, I, who you got Minnesota hosting the Wings? Wings. Yeah, me too. You know, I got to. Um, sorry, I can't give you that one, Rachel. <laughs> uh, then we got Storm at Sky. That's an interesting one. Is it? I, it is. I love <laughs> It, I, I think it is because the storm, I, this is going to sound really fucking crazy. The storm are almost a better team in my mind, but the sky have more to fight for. That's why it's interesting. I mean, their Chicago's backs are against the wall. They've lost five in a row. They're at home. They know they're playing Seattle. I don't see, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll fight tooth and nail. They'll come out with a win. Chicago will. All right. I agree with you, but I'm going to go with, the storm we need some pairs i think they're put and then for you know as they say shits and giggles on wednesday august 23rd mercury at sparks oh my god I, we could do a whole show on the mercury i don't know according to nikki blue they're they've they've, they've <laughs> they know they have they've lost their last game of their life they're gonna they're gonna 
But like, would it not be the like most ridiculous thing if next thing you know, Phoenix starts playing really well and wins a bunch of games? Yeah, but even then, the, like, like, here's my thing. I, I, there's no way. I, I just I can't pick Phoenix at any point this season. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Phoenix. I think Th- Phoenix is gonna win that game. Wow, I thought we were going LA too. Okay. No, I want to. Okay. I mean, good for you. You're gonna be down three. I look down. forward no. to. The, the show next week like i'm really like i'm gonna be locked in yeah i'm really gonna be like okay because it's we are now officially you know just under three weeks left in the regular season this is when things start getting pretty pretty good so we'll, we'll it's have gonna a lot be to really talk about next week totally um before we log out for this episode rachel remind me again i forgot um who's your goat your wife anna <laughs>